All right, a little bit earlier, Crockety came to my chat. He was like, KP, you need to check out Gully Deckle's recent games. I did. Do you know what I saw? Five games in a row on the ladder up against Voldemort. I hope he's having a better day today than he did the other day when he kept queuing into Puppy Paw and Wham. Because while Gully Deckle may be an easier mark than the Canadians, he is a very talented 16-year-old kid on the rise who I think is yet to be beaten on the HRE, actually. Like, he is completely unbeaten on this Civ since the patch. Like, actually, the interesting thing about Gully Deckle, this 16-year-old kid from Austria, when the patch dropped, he played, like, 10 HRE games in a row, won all of them, and ended up being, like, top 10 on the ladder entirely. Um, like, actually, here's an interesting thing for you right now. Gully Deckle, at the time of recording, He's 1911 ELO. He's sitting in 17th place on the ladder. Voldemort, just a little bit behind him, 1890 ELO. So, typically top of the ladder from both of them. Voldemort playing the Byzantines, though. You know, these are the two sieves that got buffed by far the most in the recent patch that came out in the middle of the Elite Classic 2 tournament. And I think in this particular matchup, HRE has some really powerful players, man. Like, you can easily kind of harass and block out the Byzantines' natural flow points. Um, I feel like the play for your Byzantines in this matchup is to not play Long Feudal to reach into Castle. But it's always variant, right? Like, for example, if the HRE player is rushing Castle as well, you're going to have more value out of getting a Lombo contract group out of five minutes and trying to harass your opponent. But if you see, if you get any semblance of Feudal Aggression, which I know Gully likes to do with these builds right now in Holy Roman Empire, you need to get the hell out of dodge. Hanging around in, in feudal long term as the Byzantines feels like a, a recipe for failure right now in this matchup. And it's going to be difficult to try and do it later on considering that this spawn for Voldemar has a Ford Berry and a Ford Gold. He has nothing worthwhile retracted behind his TC. And he is going for the greedy boy approach. Grand Winery. So this bodes well. This tells me Voldemar is at least not considering the idea that, that feudal age is a good idea here. It's not. You really don't even want to rely on Hippodrome to try and win out against HRE. That March of Drills buff with the increased gathering rates is kind of ludicrous. Um, by going for Hippodrome, you always have to remember that you're more reliant on trading well against your opponent's army because you've lost a layer to your economy, right? Like the Grand Winery gives quite this surge point in your initial contract mercs. And that's going to give Voldemar at least a little bit of agency, a little bit of control over his own defense. I imagine we're going to be looking at the Western contract. Western contract feels really, really good up against the uh, HRE. For a start, the Lombos are the better choice when turtling and defending. Um, Javelins only really matter if you're definitely up against an Archer comp, right? Um, Keshit contracts feel terrible as well. March and Drill Spearman is very difficult to contest. And the cool thing about actually going for the Western contract is the Byzantines is that it scales really, really well. The Lance Neck especially I find incredibly uh, impressive, actually. Because unlike the HRE, you find it a lot easier to scale them in the late game, right? Have you guys noticed that? It's kind of funny to watch, but the the, the order of sieves that can actually build Lancenect across the course of the game as it goes deeper as well, uh, it's, it's Byzantines number one, Dragon number two, and HRE number three, which is kind of wild to think about. Like, it, HRE's always had a difficulty with finding a way to do it efficiently. Especially since those Relic nerfs a few years ago. Was that a few years ago? Like, does anyone remember how long ago the Relic nerf was now? It was a year and a half ago, right? Roughly. God damn. It's crazy to think it's been that long. Am I getting old? Hmm. At least a year. Has been a while then. So Voldemort. Wheelbarrow being prepped on each side. Gully actually is going to be adding in units. I wondered for a second if he was going to do so. He had, of course, moved on the wood. Nine people on wood tells us this is going to be archery range follow-up over racks. Because otherwise, you'd already switch this down to be like six, maybe. Um, He's going to be adding in a few farms as well. Actually, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it isn't archers at all. How many sheep has he got? He's got nine. 14 on the other side. So Voldemar done a damn good job of taking sheep away. The walls are going up now. I imagine we're going to be getting a Merc House drop shortly because with the amount of people gathering the olive oil here, it's got 135 coming in, right? Like if you actually prep the contract, you start building now, you prep the contract, um, you should be ready to get Lombos by the time you have, I think about 325 
Olivo. Gully. Okay, scrap my idea. No archers at all. He's legit just spamming men at arms. <laughs> oh man, I, I love this new build. I know a lot of people don't because it feels toxic to encounter on the map. Guys, this is like a natural Burgrave. That's the whole logic. It's um, it's very similar to what we used to see up against Delhi, if you remember correctly, the HRE. HRE used to beat Delhi for quite a while because they would mass like 30 or 40 men at arms, tech up, still go Regnets, but then they just have an army. They'd already have their Burgrave in effect, right? Very powerful. So we should be seeing similar here coming out from Gully. First one's on the way. It's not toxic at all. All right, clearly someone's been playing up against Fast Castle, Crackety, Pass Guard, Spam builds too much. That's enough to make you think anything is not toxic. MA arrives. Outpost is at least up for Voldemar, so that's going to make it a little bit annoying for Gully, but not annoying enough, right? Like, if he actually just camps here, Outpost shouldn't be able to reach him. Yeah, nicely played right on the edge. Okay, so he's idled out gold. I wonder if Gully just thinks about training towards Castle Age now, because now that you've bought the gold, you know Voldemar can't race the same. His only play is to play Long Feudal. That's where you will eventually lose out to Lombo Mass. You haven't got a Brax, uh, plus Blacksmith, so you've only got double Blacks, right? So you don't actually have the Undermish at all. Which means you're taking half damage from these Lombos, and diving them just isn't a viable option. So far, Gully says no, I'm going to keep trucking. A little bit surprised by this. I think you've done decent damage with just this opening play. And you know it's going to force a reaction out your opponent. Just feels better to actually get ahead, right? Like with map control now, you know it has to be the Western contract. You've kind of guaranteed a lock-in. I'm hoping once Gully sees the Lombos come out, he's like, good enough. Prage, back away. Because then you can just play for relics. Like this spawn is pretty beneficial for you, right? You camp the right side, you freely gather the south, you get a full relic game. Gully just like, la la la, I can't hear you. Need more men at arms. And there we go. Lombo shops. Gully, like, you just need to back away now. Undermesh is being prepped, so he's going all in then. Yeah, if you see someone getting Undermesh like this at this stage, when they just saw Lombos, it's a full prep play. Am I blind? Where the hell? Guys. Oh, well, that, that explains. I was like, where the hell is the blacksmith? So I was looking for a proxy blacksmith across the map for some reason. This was because he was building the power tables. It's kind of crafty, actually. It has an added layer where, like, Voldemort at this stage, because of what I just said, like, oh, you've built Lombos, logically, Gully shouldn't be contesting you, right? He should be backing up and tacking up. So Voldemort might be thinking the same. By building the Blacksmiths back here behind the tree line, it makes it even harder for Voldemort to get info on your play. So not sure if that was entirely intentional for that layer, but it is a layer to this cake. Houses around Arkin. Who cares? You're like, you're gonna end this game in Feudal Age, right? <laughs> it is pretty weird to see. Especially considering he could have built them north side, but he was trying to be optimal, right? Like, I don't think he had Wheelbarrow at that point, so he wanted to build the Raxes there. And Arms Reckon ready to dive in. Olive Grove's coming through from Voldemar. He's desperate for a tech up. Look at this. Look at the food right now. Voldemar, greedy boy, <laughs> and Gully, because he doubled down like this. What a smart read. I was a little bit concerned it wasn't going to work, but Voldemar did not see through the visage. He genuinely thought this was just going to be a castle race. And the funny part is, folks, it is. Gully Deckel is gathering up what he needs to tech up. But in the meantime, he's idling Voldemar out. He's finding chip damage and kills on Eco, And he's idling the gold. That's the most important detail. Voldemar, by the time he mops this up, is going to have a handful of longbows left over. He's not going to be ready to tech himself. It's going to take him an extra minute and a half at least to get there. And that's if he pulls 10 villagers across from that gold. Wow, dude. Can we, can we give golf claps all around, Gully? What a Chad Lord this kid is. <laughs> he was doing mental cartwheels when he read the HRE patches and the buffs. I know he was. And who can blame him when they look this bloody strong? Reminder that this sieve right here, Byzantines, were the other ones that received substantial buffs. Before those buffs, they were already becoming a, a top four sieve. And now, HRE, you know, a sieve that I think a lot of players expected to move like midway up the rungs. 
the more I'm seeing them, the more I'm like, did they move midway up the rungs? Did they go from being like a, a tenth sieve to being a, a seventh sieve? Or are they now a top four themselves? Because this sieve is really impressing me in most matchups at this stage. And yes, Gully Deco is very young. He is uh, 16 years old. Just kidding. He he's two years old. Yeah, he he came off the boob just yesterday, and apparently the the calcium levels were strong because this boy can play. Relux being played for right now. Voldemar only about to initiate his tech up, and oh my dear god. Well, let's see. Um, you stayed under your TC. You built Lombos. You walled yourself in. You know, you might not have picked the English Voldemar, but you are definitely playing like them in this game. And that is rough. I like how Faye is still hoping him about the Order of the Dragon. I'm actually... So I think Order of the Dragon is still favored in the H3 matchup, but it's nowhere near as much now. The Marching Drill's difference really did help a lot. Remember I said that, that this Civ can't build land stacks? <laughs> they are the literal worst Civ at building the Salami Slices. And yet, here we are. Gully Deckel with a Knight-Lance combo. Did he misclick HRE when he meant to pick Order the Dragon? Because it kind of looks like it, doesn't it? All right, this is the comp that I actually think Order the Dragon have been finding the most success with in Castle Age. And yes, HRE men at arms are better than Gilded men at arms because of maces, but you don't get those until Castle Age. That's why Order the Dragon is favored, is because they drag the game in feudal, they don't let you tech up. That's the whole point. It's like Order the Dragon's feudal units feel like Castle Age units. Lombos. Wait, wait, why are you running? Just, wait, wait, what? <laughs> what was that? Okay, he's like, this knight should have cleaned this up with more HP left over, but a little bit scramble brain there from Gully. I don't know what the hell that was. But he's going to actually reveal the lance next. So, good news for Voldemar is he knows he's about to have his face sliced off. Bad news for Voldemar is he was planning to go into Varangian anyway, and knights plus lance neck deals with Varangian easy peasy. And Voldemort needs crossbows really badly. And he needs it more than ever now that Gully is doing the typical thing and adding in men at arms like any HRE, self respecting HRE player would. Dibbing Gavin on flanks as well. I love this from Gully. It just slows down the farm transition, right? Like, yeah, farm transitions can feel great and it lasts forever. Firm handshakes all around. Great for your diamond games. But at the highest level of play, timings are everything. And he understands right now, with Voldemar choosing to set up Olive Groves, with him teching up late, doesn't really need to rush his own farm transition. Like, doing that sacrifice is a very strong point in the game. Like, he's about to go five relics up, and he has complete map control. Why would you throw that away for a little bit of easier food gathering? There's no threat in your flanks. Take advantage of it. So, love to see that. And I hate to see this Voldemar. Oh, my God. He came out for a relic and instantly regretted it. Ouch. Uh, guys, Voldemar is about to run out of gold. This game could abruptly end. Gully is actually strong enough to constrict all gold on the map. I think Voldemar, while he's got a little bit of time, his best move would be to wall out on the south side here and just wall this off. Just move out, wall off quick. You even have some berries here. Get a few more mercs together. Like the, I don't think you go for the berries though. Like they're beyond the tree lines. Tree lines are a natural bridge points for walling. Remember. And yes, Gully, we are watching your game. I still don't like no no crossbows here. Not the cleanest. Um, yeah, I think there's like you've got this army this big, right? I think you genuinely could have went and attacked. Um, we have God Vision. It's easy for me to say right now, but you saw how desperate Voldemar looked. I actually, I really liked your feudal timing. You blocked his castle timing completely. I think what happened at this stage is you got HRE brain. 
you know what I mean, right? Like, so HRE brain is where you're you're doing everything logical and you're you're playing HRE really well, and then all of a sudden, your brain is like imperial. We should go imperial. It's like you well, you, yeah, you can go imperial, but you don't have to be here. You could easily be in his base right now doing damage, right? I think this is natural though. Whenever you're thinking about teching up, you instinctually want to do this. Gully doesn't know he's this far ahead. He should be able to sense it though with the fights he's taken. And thank you, Scion. Welcome this one, buddy. Remember, guys, use your Amazon Prime subscriptions across on my channel. Mwah. But like the interesting thing is like the reason Gully doesn't want to try to take this fight, even if he feels ahead, is because another part of being HRE brain is that whenever you look at your building options, you don't see an archery range. <laughs> right? Like, you always build melee. So the thing he's paranoid about is running up to these walls where there's going to be Lombos, maybe there'll even be a Manganel, and he'll just get held by repairs on the, the, the wall, right? And he'll lose his entire army. And it is an expensive army to risk. So, Gully, it's a safe choice, but it's one that works here, right? He's now a mile ahead. He's 5 eco up, and he just went up to 40 C. And Imperial. Not to mention the fact this is a 5 relic game and free sacred sites. You know, I just realized we, we didn't do our appropriate uh, intro of the kid versus the toddler here. Oof. Does the kid need to go back to school? Emerson's the toddler. Yeah, but what are we going to call you? Like, the, So here's the thing. If Voldemar's the kid, but he's older than you, you can't be the teen. So, I think MSN's the baby. Right? Like, what have you got after toddler? Because, like, it, it's baby, toddler. Teen. Uh, baby, toddler, kid, teen. There's probably something I'm forgetting. Typhon's coming in as well. Good God, as if he didn't have enough ego already. All right, big brother. Time to show him how you defend. Golly Deco. Front lining with these elite knights. And there's not enough Limitane. This wall's going to go down. Gold access is going to be gone. Voldemar is in trouble. And he hasn't got a wall up here. He built this cistern. Dundemar has arrived. As in, he is done with this game. <laughs> that is brutal. 55 to 27. But the Lance next, the Knights, finally the Berserk's going to come out, but it's going to come at a price. Men at arms, Lance, Knights, able to keep Voldemar dead in his base. He will be able to hold. But the problem is he's falling further and further behind as the minutes pass. 51 to 72 eco. It's not enough to hold your own base anymore, Voldemar. You need to go and kill. Really good hold there, though. Um... This is the interesting thing about Varangian, is if you don't have the maces, you 100% lose. Like, I, I'm kind of surprised he didn't get maces. I guess he thought the knights were going to be good enough, um, but he, this is an interesting matchup, by the way. Like, when you get into Imperial Age and you get all the upgrades on each side, but Varangian are better than Men at Arms one-on-one -on -one because they have a better attack speed, right? 1.38 compared to the 1.38, but then when you get the um, the... Berserking? No, Berserking's a move speed. When you get T-Drop Shields, you get down to like 1.12. And then if you Berserk, like you just mince me, right? Um, it's very, very powerful. Oh, wait. Why are you building your base? Wait, you're building Siege? Why? Oh, Archer Rangers. Um, are you? Golly, it, it seems that your recollection of your own games is um, cringe. <laughs> Berserk coming again. That mango's doing decent damage. Have I misread this? Wait, dude, dude, have I called this too early? Golly, where the hell are your troops right now? Build some units for God's sake. Oh my God, I can't believe he didn't get heavy maces earlier than this. I mean, th this is still a hard base to, def like, to dive, right? Cannon's coming in 10 seconds. 
Voldemort can do some damage, but I don't think he can end the game off this. This is about to get dicey, especially when he clumps up like this. Which is what's happening when the Vrangian run over, right? Heavy Mace is coming through soon. Siege Engineering being prepped. Vol Voldemort. Uh, Siege Engineering is usually better to, to build not underneath the TC. <laughs> I actually think the cannon's going to save him. Dude, this is so stupid about HRE. Any other Civ makes this choice, game is over. Right? Like, game is done. But HRE, with these obnoxious cannon emplacements and the triple TC effect of Palace of Swabia, means they get away with blind murder. Unbelievable. I, <laughs> I feel so bad for Voldy. I mean, I was like, yeah, this game looks over. Voldemort's like, hold my beer. He's like, oh, wait, I'm trying to dive HRE and Imperial. This, I know what's coming. Poor guy, he tried to prep for it as well, right? He got Siege Engineering, but it just felt like it was too late. More Lancenet coming out. Men at Arms as well. This should be enough to stabilize. I, I think this is now where Voldemort, it looked like he was starting to macro towards Imperial Age. Playing into Imperial here is going to slow down his grinder, though. And the problem is by the time you get there, it's going to be a 90, 95 eco situation, right? So a 30 plus villager lead with all the relics. Like, it's just not... What the f... This is so unnecessary! <laughs> no, no. It, I, I, also, by the way, I didn't... No, 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 no. This is not my fault. I told Gully to attack the goal. He finally listened. Not to attack the base. No, in fairness, I think Gully, like, that attack into the base of Voldemort, if he'd just done that before he teched up instead, it probably would have been GG then. He waited a very long time, though. And credit to Voldemort, like, he played it right. He got his comp together. And now he's trying to go into Imperial, but guys, like, <laughs> he can't access the gold! Oh, this is over. This, this is actually over now, right? Like, he, he's got 4k gold up here. Maybe that's his recovery arc. But this is a lot of gold for Atri to have and you not. Some would call this greedy considering he's got five relics in Palace of Swabia. <laughs> he's even building his houses out here. Foreign Engineering Company on the way. It's not a bad choice. Foreign Engineering Company, like the logic is you're up against mass men at arms, you build nest of bees, GG. But you're actually going to be up against culverins. Um, one thing that is quite nice, actually, about Foreign Engineering Company with this contract, though, is the, the volley on the Lombos is super effective. Like, your base damage is high enough that even men-at-arms with all their armor still feel it, right, at this stage of the game. But this is still... precarious. And, wait, dude, dude, no, Faye, I'm not going to hear this. That, like, wrong landmark, dude. If you're building a Palatine school when you have 4k gold and that's it... I don't want to look at your match history. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm going to say, I'm going to have to look down in, in 300, 400 rank. You, you just can't. Like, I'd agree this matchup, Palatine School probably feels pretty good if you have your 8k gold. If you have your 8k gold. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm not going to talk to you. If you're bidding on Matane against five relic, Lance deck HRE, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I would think that someone that respects Landsnet so much they load a ram up with it would have more respect on them in the Unlimitane matchup. Because, like, it's Unlimitane versus Unlimited Landsnet, right? And wow, Gully's actually going into hand cannons. Hmm. I, I mean. There are there are ways you can potentially lose a game of AoE four, and, and this is this is trending towards that direction. Uh, I would I would rarely ever recommend hand cannoneers when you're up against uh, Longbo Byzantines in Imp. I guess he's just like I've got all this gold. How do I spend it? And I don't want to be just melee comp. Maybe it would have been better to just like build siege and mass melee with Lancenek. Because, like, <laughs> I think he's just, he's got too much gold to lose the game, right? Like, realistically, he has way too much gold to lose this game. But, if there was a way you could lose a game of AoE 4, not saying he's going to, but if there was, it would be building um, hand cannoneers up against mass volley longbows. These guys hit hard. I remember, 
They get volley by default, right? The moment the foreign engineering company is built, they have it. That's coming in. Now the mangoes just need to move here, and this is over. And arms are going to go line formation to protect. And Lombos have to start dodging like they're near. Frank going to get right around the back. Voldemort could go for the Berserk here to clear up the siege. I think you should as well, because right now these bombards are like 50 caliber sniper rifles. And I think it just doesn't matter. Elite Army Tactics is in for one side, and it most definitely is not for the other. So that will definitely be GG. Tough matchup, right? I've been seeing a lot of HRE players stomp on Byzantines at the moment. I think this is the time when we always notice. It's that tech up into Imperial ahead that gives them the advantage getting in to Elite Army Tactics. And that is the difference maker. If a Byzantine player can find a way to survive that, they can find a way to win. But the only person winning non-stop, 100% win rate now with the HRE is Gully Deckle.